Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to these, these right here are going to be my end of year awards for wrestling. Oh yes indeed, I've been a lucky pup this year. I've been to 34 wrestling shows, which when you think about it is quite mad. Bear in mind there's 52 weeks in the year, which means that, you know, two thirds of the weekends of this year I've been to a show. On That's statistically of course, that's not how it's been done. There's been quite a few double weekends, but you know. It's all good. Very, very lucky. Feel very, very blessed. Feel worried that that's too many. I've got to be honest. Straight up, I will be honest with you. Too many might just be. It might just be. Because well, the thing is, because the Northwest scene is thriving so much up here at the moment, uh, I've been to a lot of shows. And the thing is, a lot of these feds are using the same people. So I've seen the same people quite a lot of times, you know what I mean? All in excited matches, and there's been you know, some of these people I've gone to shows to specifically to see. But you know, I, I worry that I worry that I've been to too many, and that I might start getting bored of it. And I worry also that because you know, we've had quite a new couple, few companies start up this year, Great Bear Promotions for an Infinite Promotions are two that spring to, spring to mind, yeah. Um, I do worry that there's going to be an oversaturation of the market soon. You know, I must say that right here. Um, but, you know, a year of ups and downs. You know, not not very many downs as well. I mean, there's a couple. PCW banning me from the show for doing a review was a bit shit, wasn't it, PCW? And, of course, what they did to my YouTube channel, which I will never, ever forgive them for. For You know, I had a... I had a message from Stephen Flutter saying you can upload your, your footage onto your YouTube channel and then got a copyright claim from you, you guys at Preston City Wrestling Limited. That's a dick thing to do in any stretch of imagination. Locking my car in that um, car park in Liverpool, that was a bit of a dick thing to do, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, man. The, the great thing about that is that I, I can now laugh about that one because, of course, it was six, seven months ago. So I can, you know, look back and go, ha, <laughs> ha, what a silly boy I was. But, you know, it, 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 other than that, you got panicked. Anyway, I've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen categories here, ranging covering a, a various amount of topics, and all of them, bar one, are already. I have my thing here. Apart from match of the year, match of the year, I've got until we get to it to decide. I've got three choices. One of those will be my match of the year. It's just I've got to decide on which one. Okay, so let's start. Off. Worst match of the year. Happened at a PCW show a long, long time ago. Back in February, I think it was. Blood, Sweat and Beers. A show I truly, truly couldn't stand. A, tr a show that was is, is in the shortlistings for show of the year for SF FSO. I maintain to this day what I don't like about it. And this match, I'm about to say, was one of the overriding factors. Picture, if you can, a no disqualification match that ends... In a disqualification. It's Vince Russo WCW booking at its absolute worst. It starred Sean the Hammer Davies versus MVK. Absolutely horrible match in every way conceivable. And yeah, ending a no disqualification match on a disqualification is the stupidest finish I've seen this year. For that reason, and that reason alone, if nothing else, that was my worst match. I mean, I've seen some crap matches this year, but nothing came close to that one. Hey now, screen's over. Worst show. Now, this one was tricky because of the 34 shows that I've been to this year, only the PC <laughs> ones the ones that I haven't enjoyed. And all the PCW ones had matches on that I really enjoy, really did enjoy. You know, and I saw the Akira Tazal vs. Aligero match at PCW, and I saw a fantastic open match at Blood, Sweat and Beers, a four-way that I really enjoyed. But obviously I'm not Mr. PCW, so you could say, I mean, I mean, if you say a card that's got two good matches on it, yeah, and the rest is either garbage or the crowd is shit, then PCW Guild Wars has to be considered, because that had... Kirby versus Spud on it, that was good, and it had Akira Tozawa versus Elgaro on it, which was good, and everything else was pants. And the crowd was flat, and it's, you know, obviously PCW fans think it's the greatest show that there's ever been, you know, so. But for me personally, it wasn't the PCW show that, that was the worst. No, 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 no. I'll tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, never in my whole life, or never in the whole 10 years that I've lived in this area have I been more ashamed to live in this area than when I went to Pro Wrestling for You Silverdale, Show Silverdale Showdown 2. It seemed to me, right, that the mums and dads came to this building, right, and they noticed that there was a bar over here and a function room with the Olympics on, and the wrestling was in another room, and they all the parents just went, hey, little Johnny, you go in there, and I'm going in here. So, 
the first half of the show was horrible. Just, uh, just a horrible, horrible experience because there's kids running around everywhere and I couldn't concentrate at any point because I was on the, on the side of the second or third row and every so often the kids would come running out and they would start beating up the wrestlers when they went to the outside and they were so loud in not a good way though. When you've got a little girl sat behind you who is screaming at the top of her lungs in your right ear, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was just like, I want to leave here. I've never walked out of a wrestling show. I can't think of a time where I ever would, but I was so close. At the intermission, we all went outside, our little crew did, and we sat, we sat and chilled, and went, should we fuck this off? And it's only the drawing power of the two main events, which was uh, Zach Gibson versus Sam Bailey and Dave Rain versus the Bayface Pitbull that made us stay. If, we hadn't, if it hadn't been for those matches, we would have just gone, I caught our losses and ran. It was the worst show of the year, hands down. I mean, so, it wasn't just the kids, I must put out, every match in the first half was like, oh, this. And then, I mean, like, the opening match was a, for their G6 championship, I think it was. And it was like, a guy would do an amazing, incredible move, yeah? And then they'd do the, the next move that they do, they, it just felt like they botched it something fierce. And it was like, oh, oh, come on. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my worst show. Yeah, let's do some good things, shall we? Best show. Best show of the 34 shows. How do you choose one? I don't know. There's going to be sad. You're going to say Future Shock show. No, 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 no. Just because I have a severe bout of Future Shock items, I just can't seem to shake. It ain't going to be a fight. It ain't going to be a Future Shock one. No. I've probably just spoiled it for you. It's going to be Fight Club Pro one. Fight Club Pro, Project Mayhem Night. Project Mayhem 2, Night 1 was the best wrestling job I've been to this year for atmosphere and match quality alone. It was unbelievable. I didn't review it. You've probably noticed. Say, oh, why didn't you review this one? Show why I didn't review it? Because I went out and absolutely shit-faced. This is what I did. I drank 15 pints of cider. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to sit and go, I didn't make the night better. Let me tell you something. I normally have memory loss when I drink, and that night I didn't. I remember every single detail as clear as, you can, as, clear as day. And then, you know... The night, the trip down, the road trip down was fantastic. Chilling in Wolverhampton was fantastic. The whole show was fantastic. And then just as we're thinking of leaving, we're sat chilling outside and having a cold bus over. And, hey, Mark, you come in the pub. I'm like, eh, yeah, go on then. <laughs> so I went to the pub with the whole roster, whole Fight Club Pro roster and Rockstar Spud and Adam Cole. And I'm sorry I'm name check, name dropping there a bit. But for a little wrestling fan like me, I'm saying, eh, this is the most surreal thing I've ever done. Walking through Wolverhampton City Centre with the Fight Club Pro roster and Max and Paul and going, What's happening? <laughs> sort of thing. Like, uh, this is a bit strange. But yeah, every single match of the five match card, every single one of them delivered. I cannot wait to see it back on DVD. I recorded so many clips from that night. All of them were just like, yes, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, there are shows. Future Shock 62, for example, was absolutely superb. Future Shock 59, sorry, uh, sorry, 60, I think it was, was incredible. We went on a run from like 58, 59, 60, 61 and 62 of just incredible shows Future Shock did. But Fight Club Pro had just had that atmosphere and well, it had Adam Cole versus Jonathan Gresham, which was, was one of the best matches I've seen this year. Speaking of Jonathan Gresham, he is my international wrestler of the year. Yeah, I've got an international and a British wrestler of the year. The international one, hands down, Jonathan Gresham. Not only is he an absolutely fantastic bloke, really enjoy talking to him. Got a, you know, really switched on. Got a sound shot with head on his shoulders. Yeah, his. I've never seen him had a bad match, not one. Actually, no. I tell a lie. As I say that, something I genuinely haven't thought about. PCW fed him to Sean the Hammer Davies, and he got beaten in like two minutes and didn't get any offense in. Well done, PCW. That was inspired booking once again. Yeah, every other match I've seen him in has been. Fucking incredible. His match at Southside, where he teamed up with um, MK McKinnon, take on the leaders, um, was just incredible. His match with Adam Cole, I'd say. First time I saw him was against Chris Brooks, a great bear, in front of 20 people, and it was awesome. Every single match I've seen, I've seen him like 10 times maybe this year now, because he is a draw for me nowadays. He is, a, you know, if Jonathan Gresham's on the card, I will go and watch him. I will pay to go and watch him wrestle. He's facing Zack Sabre Jr. at the first Great Bear Show at the end of January. Fucking get in there. Love that. Next, most underrated. Now, I could give this one to Dylan Roberts, because I think he's a criminally underrated bloke, and he's a fucking great bloke, and he's so ruggishly good looking, it bothers me greatly. But, <laughs> People have never heard of Dylan, and that really winds me up sometimes. If I talk about talking about British wrestling, and I mention the name Dylan Roberts, I'm like, who's that? I'm like, really? His match back with a bang, GPW, earlier this year with, uh, uh, against Jack Gallagher was stunning. Absolutely stunning. Really, really good. 
every time I see the guy, I just think, oh, he is fantastic. You know, he got you no, know, he gets it. He's got a great gimmick, really good. But he isn't my most underrated wrestler, believe it or not. There's one more name of people, if especially if I talk to people from Dan Seth, because you've got to say it like that. <laughs> The most underrated, the people you talk to, and you know, I mentioned this name, and they're like, who? And like, really? Because every time I watch this guy in action, I'm just like, this guy is awesome. Whether he's in the models at Future Shock and Infinite, or whether he's going to sit on his own uh, at GPW, Danny Hope, for me, is the most underrated guy of any wrestler I know at the moment. It's like, people, especially, especially I think in some respects, it's because he's so popular as half of the models with Joey Hayes, and everyone knows Joey. Everyone, he's in, you know, people's loads, everyone's top tens this year for wrestler of the year, isn't he? Danny, sometimes I feel like it gets a bit forgotten as the other's half, and he's just as good. I think he's just as good as Joey Hay, and he's a top bloke, and oof, I'm going to burp, excuse me. And, um, yeah, definitely most underrated of the year. Best entrance music is MK McKinnon. He uses a rock top version of the Back to the Future theme, which just makes me happy. But rookie of the year is... There's no question about this one. Hands down, rookie of the year is Josh Brogan, who is going to be a star. He is going to be massive. I recently watched him work heel for the first time at Great Bear and was just like, oh, yeah, now, now, yes. Yes, that was the one, the one the missing link. And it's like, oh. It, I, I was there for Josh's first match. I've seen every moment one of his matches bowl one. I missed his first match with CJ Bankshire. But I'm proud every time to say I was there for his first match, you know. And I, I, I see these games as I see you get, you know, I see every every one of his matches. You can tell he's been he's been listening. He's been improving, and you're just like, yeah, he's just he's got a star written all over him. Could do with him hearing him give a cut promo. That's that's something I've noticed about the rookies that I've seen this year is that none of them given any mic time, so they can't really develop out a little bit more. Which is something I'd like to see from Josh, and I've loved that heel persona. I just love his match with Cyanide at Future Shock sixty three was fucking superb. Aha! Uh -huh. Next, holy shit moment. Um. I've just got really confused in myself, haven't I? Oh, I don't know. Um, um, I mean, holy shit moment is... This was quite a tricky one because there's been some... Oh, fuck! Davey Richards winning the Future Shock Championship at the Super Show, for example, was a massive... Oh, my God, I can't believe I didn't see that coming. You know, because every, I think everyone, of the, of the, all the crowd, everyone like, yep, Jack's going to win. <laughs> it's obvious, isn't it? it you know, the import is going to win the championship. Jack's winning. Also, Davey beat Jack the first time out. Yeah, you know, it's not going to happen. But for me, personally, I watched it just this back the other night. I bought the DVD a couple of days ago and watched it back. And I still can't get... It was Joey Hayes turning on the XWA, basically, back at Vendetta in July, was so left field. Some people, I mentioned this on Facebook the other night, and some people put, yeah, I saw it coming. I'm telling you something, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't see it coming one bit. Joey Hayes had wrestled it earlier on in the show in a neutral match, because it's XWA versus GPW, yeah? Neutral match, yeah? And they put on a great match. GP, um, it was Joey Hayes versus Bubblegum. Great little match. Very back and forth. Yada, yada. Very interesting, because two baby faces, which was a, kind of created a weird dynamic. But at the same time, you know, when Joey Hayes came out you know, in the big beatdown that happened in the main event. He just thought, what, where, what, what's going on here? What's, what's going to happen? And he timed, you know, as, as Johnny Fear's going for a spear, he timed it so perfectly, it hit a JKO. And it's like, wow, didn't see that coming one bit. Utter twat of the year. I could give this one to PCW, naturally, for did what they did to my YouTube account. And I could give it to the whole list of people. Andrew Mortimer blocks me on Facebook, yeah, because I did a PCW review that he didn't like. He blocked me. His exact words, yeah, Stephen gives you a free ticket and this is how you treat him. What, for doing a review? Seriously. That's why I'm not asked. Flutter put, so after all this had gone down, Flutter put something along the lines of, um, no, you've lost so many friends about, uh, over all this. Well, because I did a review and I was honest. <laughs> if, if people don't want to be friends with me because I did a review of their show, I'm not interested in one bit. I don't genuinely do not care. It's just one of those things that it, it's been lodged in the back of my mind as a, what a prick. If I ever do an end of year review show, I'm going to mention. <laughs> now, all the twat of the year is Adam Bowler. Hands down, if you haven't heard that name, I'll put a link in the description, yeah? AJB did a fucking stunning interview with this fucking Fruit Loop, who sent me a message one day out of the blue, saying, hey, you're coming to my show? I'm like, no, 
I don't have a clue about your show. And he told me about his show. And I thought, oh, that could be good. And then I noticed it was in Leeds and thought, nah, that in Leeds is a bit too far to go for a show that I've, I've nothing I've heard of. And he sends that classic one, that classic thing, my show would be better than GPW. I'm like, well, there's a way of selling your show to me. Your show would be better than another Fed show. And I copied and pasted this and I put it on Facebook. I took a screen print of it, put it on Facebook. And the guy just went ballistic at me for weeks. And weeks and weeks and weeks. He got me three strikes on my Facebook account for post I posted things he'd said and he reported to them to Facebook as bullying. Go and just type in Adam Bowler or, or Britain British Wrestling into Google and just see what comes up because this guy is a fucking fruit loop of the highest, highest order. He um he wanted to fight me. He told me if I go to his show, yeah, this the same show that he invited me to, he would um beat me up. And I was so tempted to go. And then I tried to get to the NGW show on the Sunday instead because this was on the Saturday night. And, you know, I'm sat there checking into on the Saturday night, checking the internet over and over again, going, please, someone just give me some results. And when these results came in, it sounded like it was the greatest show of all time for all the wrong reasons. All I, all I can say is this, yeah, there's so many promoters that I, I know and I like and I respect. Dave Ray and Stephen Fudder, for, for all his faults, you know, he's making money, so he must be doing something right. Ben Old is one, and Trent Seven at Fight Club, and all these great promoters that are working so hard to get British wrestling, you know, back up and to buoyant it. And, and, and then you've got dickheads like Adam Bowler, whose parents will pay for a show for him that is awful. And don't, don't I mention that his show drew seven paying people? Seven? To a venue that the wrestler had been at before. You know, that's how crappy his show was back in February. You know, it was that bad that he went to the same venue and he did more advertising and they did they drew less people. And the thing about Adam Bowler, let me just say this, the worst part about him, he is a pathological liar. So he'll tell you something that you know, you know, right, is a fact. You've asked this, but the person who it's all he's talking about, did this happen? And the person gone, this is how it happened. So you say to Bowler, listen, I just be honest with me, man. I think I've heard it happened like this. What happened? And he'll tell you some fabricated bollocks. And you're like, dude, you're lying. Why do you? I'm not fucking lying, comes the message. No, but I know that you are. I've known the person I'm talking about for a while now. I trust their opinion, and they said it happened. And actually, now I think about it, someone who was in the crowd that night also said his version of the story. And then Bowler will tell you that actually, yeah, you're telling the truth. So I like, fucking lied to me. Blocked him a long time ago. One of the best things I ever did. Because, my God, he's poking me. Actually, now I think about it. So I can't have blocked him, can I? I removed him as a friend. Yeah, he's poking me on Facebook like a fucking nutter. And then, one more thing on Bowler, yeah. <laughs> he said that I needed, needed to go to Leeds to do an exclusive interview with him. But, oh, this is super, This is the type of nutcase he is, yeah. Oh, he, I could only ask him questions that he had written. And he had to check all the footage. that Because I was going to film this and put it online. He had to check all the footage. And he would only allow it if he was satisfied with the footage. Superb. He was meant to do an interview with the uh, 30 Minute Pipe, Pipe Gun crew guys. And I was so looking forward to that. Because they were going to be they were going to be lenient with him. They were going to give him. They weren't going to go, look, you're a dick. You know, anti, anti-critics. They were going to ask him legitimate questions. And he pulled out of it like a coward that he is. Fucking hey. Right. Four more to go. I still haven't decided my main event. Um, uh, match of the year, sorry. Best promo. I've seen some great promos this year. The best promo for me that I've seen this year was Zach Gibson's promo at Future Stock 62. It was full of a cold, absolutely full of a cold. Came out having wrestled at GPW on the Friday night and NGW on the Saturday night and now at Future Shock on the Sunday and came out and told David Richards a new one because he was full of the flu. And it was just, it was such a powerful promo. It was like, yeah, this guy's telling the truth. This guy's telling the truth. I'm not, still not going to boo David Richards. I don't know what Future Shock's game is with Davey Richards. I really just don't know. People seem to think that I'm in with management of Future Shock. I haven't a clue what's happening with Davey. I think it's all work, but that's just me, personally, because it's one of those. I'm a a jaded old wrestling fan. It's like, you actually think think I'm going to believe this? No, I don't believe anything. (laughs) Promotion of the year for putting on consistently good shows all the way through the year is Future Shock. I can't, you know, who else was it going to be, really? I've enjoyed every single one of the products. I've spent a ton of merchandise on them because they do great merchandise. Their DVDs are fantastic. Their customer service is fantastic. I've got my girlfriend just about an hour ago has bought me the uh, season pass for next year, which is fantastic, which means I can go to all the shows next year and not have to worry about paying for them, which is fucking superb. Very happy about that. Future Shock are my promotion of choice. Don't be surprised if I do this this bid this time next year and say it's Fight Club Pro. 
Just saying. Because fuck, Fight Club Pro's awesome. Been to two shows. Love them so much. So much. Come away going, oh! You know when you come away from, when you've been to something, and you come away, and you're actually buzzing. You're like, yes! Both times at Fight Club. Both fucking times. The thing is, I'm not saying that's not happened at Future Shock. It's happened a lot. I'm just saying that coming away from fucking, <laughs> coming away from Project Mayhem night two, night one, sorry, was just like, you know, yeah! Skipping down the fucking street. Wrestler of the year. All year, I would have said Noam Dar, right? All year, I would have said Noam Dar is the best in the country. And then this last couple of weeks, I've, when I've been sat thinking about this, because I've been this, this, this bit a lot of thought. When I've been at work and I've been bored, I'm like, I don't know, who's my wrestler of the year, for example? And it's like Noam Dar. And then I started thinking about it, and it's like, it's not Noam Dar. Noam Dar is awesome. And in a couple of years' time, he will be probably the greatest wrestler in the country, if not the world. I'm that certain of it. He's only 19, for God's sake. The problem with Noam, why? he is my wrestler of the year i'm gonna burp again <sighs> excuse me um the reason he's not my wrestler of the year is because when i've seen i've seen him primarily work as a baby as a heel and when i've seen him work as a baby face i haven't enjoyed it as much i haven't enjoyed the act as much if you want to call it that um and the same could be said for someone like El Aguero, who I know was voted the UKFF Wrestler of the Year. I've not seen the guy wrestle heel at all. It's been primarily babyface. The thing about my Wrestler of the Year is I've seen him work so many times as a babyface, but I've seen him work as an equal amount as a heel. In fact, I've seen him wrestle on a Saturday night as a heel and wrestle on a, on a Sunday night as a face and vice versa this year. And he slots into the role so easily. And then he's been a good wrestler. He's one of the few Brit wrestlers guys I remember seeing back in the day. I saw him like 2009, uh, a one-off show called Extreme Wrestling For You. Remember the same guys who did the pro, pro Wrestling For You? He's the only guy on the card that I remember. The only one that stood out was my wrestler of the year. And then I remember him being good then. And all this year he's been good. All last year he was good. But I don't know, the last six months... He's taken his already fucking awesome game and just raised the bar something fierce. His match with Josh Bowden, for example, at the last Great Bear Show was so good, so crisp, so clean. Psychologically wise, was perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, big up standing for, and also for just being a fucking great guy. Genuinely awesome guy. My wrestler of the year is Jerry Hayes. And it's a well deserved accolade. I trust me on that one. He is so good, so brilliant. Incredible, incredible wrestler. And like I say, genuinely nice bloke as well. Match of the year. <laughs> Shit. Been dreading this moment. One of three matches will be my match of the year. Number one is Akira Tozawa versus El Ligero from PCW Guild Wars. <sighs> Fuck, it was good. It was awesome being there live. I went to the show to see Tozawa. Another one of those times where I went for the import and not giving a fuck about the show. Um, and Jesus Christ, did I have to be talked into that. I got I got told on the Monday that my PCW ban had been lifted. I got um, sent a text message, are you coming PCW? Straight away, no, not interested. It's Cesar, don't care, not interested. The whole week, my crew, please come. Night before at GPW Battlefield, oh my God, the pressure was just like, please come, please come, please come. Please. Bloody Jenna Allison that convinced me, damn it. <laughs> I went, the match was awesome. I have issue with the match because it had no reason for happening and nothing came of it. And what I mean by that is there was no storyline built to it at all. I'm just thinking as I go here, these, this, this bit hasn't been thought out very much. <laughs> or these reasonings. And afterwards, let me put it this way, the next show was the one I went to, which was the, oh my God, one but not forgotten. Worst show name of the year. If I had a category, that would be it. One but not forgotten. Makes no sense at all. None. Um, El Aguero was in a match versus Dave Mastiff. The winner got put into the main event. So it's not like he got, hey, you beat El Aguero to Zawa, you go straight into the main event. No, no, nothing came of it. And it's like, that that rules that one out, I'm afraid. So the other one, so it goes down to two. And it could be a tie. It really could be a tie. It really could. On the one hand, you have, from the Super Show, Davey Richards versus Jack Gallagher was fucking incredible. If I watch, every time I watch that back, match, match, that match back now, I spot something else. And the psychology in it was perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. The whole match. But it had a horrible, horrible ending where Jack got injured and basically Davey won when he wasn't meant to. He uh, headbutted Jack Gallagher. That ending still bothers me. And watching it with people who weren't there live, 
they don't, you know, I watched it with a few people who weren't there, who were wrestling fans, and they went, oh, I didn't like that. <sighs> so because of that, that's that one ruled out as well. So ladies and gentlemen, I've just come to the conclusion, my main event of the year, also, I must say, and just now I think, but I hadn't thought of this one either, because it didn't have any imports in it, it had just the core members of the roster. So my main event, my main event, meh, my match of the year, 2012, is from taken from GPW Battlefield, and it's Martin Kirby defending the championship against Cyanide, Jack Gallagher, and Dirk Fielder, because each of those men had put something on the line. Martin Kirby put the championship, Cyanide put his number one contender, Jack Gallagher put, Jack, put Gallagher's gold, and Dirk Fielder put his career on the, on the line. Every time I watch that match, I've watched it back three or four times now back on DVD, it just gets better and better. The atmosphere was incredible. All moves, smooth and crisp. And I tell you something, I was so convinced that Dirk Fieldgood was going to win that match. I was so certain. That, uh, there it is, the thing, the thing, ladies and gentlemen. There's this clincher. I had an emotional investment in this match. And that, ladies and gentlemen, for that reason, my match of the year from GPW Battlefield. Go check it out on DVD. It's a fucking incredible ladies and gents you'll notice i didn't mention anything about WWE because i don't give a fuck and anything about tna because i also don't give a fuck but i'd like to hear what your if you there's if you are if you've got those categories tell me something about the tell me your favorite things about this year thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen this year we've had a great year well we haven't we lost the account didn't we we've got a new one we've got about 800 subscribers 2013 is only gonna get better and bigger isn't it i'm gonna do you the next bit i'm probably gonna do for you will be a raw 10th anniversary show i've never seen the show ever so i'm actually genuinely looking forward to that it's got all the awards and shit on it and it should be fun shouldn't it ladies and gentlemen i've been mark p thank you very much for watching hit that subscribe button have a great christmas have a safe new year and i will see you all very soon take it easy guys